All right, what is up, guys? Welcome to episode four of All Access, the Freetography Podcast. My podcast about urban exploration, the hobby of going places you're not supposed to go, doing things you're not supposed to do. Last episode with Greg Abandon was a great episode. My first international explorer interview and host of the uh, Chasing Bandos podcast. Coming up now, Ethan Minnie is episode four. Ethan Minnie is an explorer, very young explorer from Ontario, Canada. You guys are gonna like his stuff. So stick around to learn a little bit about Ethan Minnie. After that, once again, we're gonna do what we always do and we're gonna read a couple of lines or paragraphs from the book, Access All Areas. I'm gonna find a topic that Ethan and I talked about and I'm gonna go back to 2005 to the book, Access All Areas and see what Jeff Chapman, also known as Ninjalicious, had to say in his book that he wrote in 2005 about that topic. So whether you guys are on the road driving, sitting at home, hope you guys like this one. Podcast number four with Ethan Minnie. let's go. All right, guys, here we go. Episode number four with my good friend, Ethan Minnie. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Ethan before we get talking. He is a full-time YouTube explorer and personality with 97,000 YouTube subscribers. Current forecasting puts him at 100,000 subscribers in just 34 days. He has 17 million views on YouTube. All of this, and he turns 23 years old in just two days. All this. Very successful. Ethan, welcome to the podcast and thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank awesome. You. So let's start off by you just telling us a little bit about yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. What's Ethan like when you're not exploring? And yeah. tell us how you got into exploring abandoned places. So yeah, uh, outside of exploring, uh, my other hobby, I guess, would be uh, I'm really into cars. Huge car guy. I have been all my life. Um. I collect model cars. I have thousands of them. Um, other than that, I'm I'm really uh, just airboxing cars. You know, um, that's really my only two main hobbies. Okay, that's cool. So you got into exploring at a, at a young age, and uh, mm -hmm. what got you inspired to get into YouTube? So I guess I'll start when I first started exploring. I was um, it was actually ten years ago. Yesterday was the first time I went out and, and explored. Um, there was this Highway 407 expansion, and we had a house, and that was involved in that. And seeing all the other different properties that were affected by that, really, you know, I explored a lot of those, and that's really what got me into the whole thing. And then I, the YouTube thing really didn't start until I was 17 when I first met um, my good friend Carlo and Terry. Um, I met up with them and, and I really seen, you know, how, how they did things. And, and then it took about a year and then I got into the YouTube thing as well. So this is what's crazy about you and YouTube. And we're going to get to this in a minute, but I, when I look at your YouTube channel, your mm -hmm. thumbnails are just pictures. There's no right, bold, flashy words. No. You have, you know, pretty generic, uh, easy titles, yeah. a very short description and hardly any of your videos have, have, uh, keywords. Mm -hmm. I I create a thumbnail. I add words to it. I put lots of thought behind my my titles, my description. I add my links. I change up my uh, my 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 uh, keywords whenever I can, if possible. And I come mm -hmm. nowhere near the views that you get. And it you it seems to come so easy for you. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I, I've always been like that. And it's not because I'm lazy. It's just, I, I just, I believe in if whatever works just to keep doing it. And I started really simple. You know, my edits are really simple. I, I literally edit my videos on my phone, on iMovie. I film them with my phone. My thumbnails are just pictures I take and I edit them a bit to make them a little brighter. And then like, it's yeah. just really basic stuff, but it works. So I, I just, that's what I do. I almost feel like YouTube favors the simpler cell phone stuff that you just do and just upload like you put what i found is the more effort i put into anything yeah. <laughs> the less it gets seen and if it's right. something that i just sort of threw up and it what didn't as a, as a second you know didn't put a second thought to it that's the yeah. stuff that goes it blows up it's crazy right yeah absolutely <laughs> so speaking of blowing up so you've experienced pretty massive and rapid growth on YouTube. You're regularly getting five-digit views rather mm. quickly on, on every video. 
Yeah. Do you find that it was like that from the start or did one specific video really jumpstart that for you? I'd say it was one video because when I first started, I would get like, when I seen like a thousand views, that was like incre incredibly exciting to me. And then there was one video, I think it was around the end of February, 2020. It was the house with the blue staircase and the matching twin beds. Yeah. I posted that and that just it blew up like one day. I know I had one day in, I think it was March, like 165,000 views in one day. Like it was like, I was like, what, where did this come from? I was, you know, I was, I didn't know what to think. And then everything I posted from there now on just kind of, you know, blew up. So, so that, and that's crazy. And the, it's such good luck for you and congratulations to you because, you know, at such a young age to see so much, uh, so much success. It's great. And you've really found your, your space with the abandoned mansions. And that seems to be your thing. Um, yeah. Do you have any, um, any thoughts of moving on from mansions? Because there's only so many mansions mm -hmm. and then you might run out, you know, have you ever considered uh, expanding to regular houses or something else? Right. Um, there are some houses I do that are more normal sized, obviously, but I, I, the way I look at it is at the rate development is at right now, there's always going to be older houses from decades past that buyers come in and purchase that are outdated and they want to tear down and they'll sit vacant and I'll have that chance to explore them. And, and there's just, there's so many of them. I don't think I will run out for a while, but I do see maybe one day there being a point where, you know, maybe that isn't an option anymore. Right. So, and then that actually segues into my, my next question, which is a bit of a tougher question to ask. And that's mm -hmm. that. So at 23 years old in two days, happy birthday, by the way, <laughs> yeah. um, you have accomplished a lot. You found some great success with YouTube. Mm -hmm. What happens if tomorrow YouTube mm -hmm. decides urban explorers don't get monetized anymore. Do you have a backup plan for your life in case, because this is your bread and butter, right? This is what yeah. pays for that car you're sitting in right now. Um, yes. Do you have a plan B? I don't. And that's something that I think about every day, to be honest with you. I'm like, well, what, what, if something happens tomorrow, what do I do? I would obviously have to go figure something out. And that is something that definitely sits with me uh, quite often. Yeah. And well, I mean, the thing is like, talk about somebody like Carlo, for example, where mm. Carlo has tried to get away from the abandoned stuff and doing yeah. stuff with his cars. And right. I, I can see that some, being somewhere you could go with, with mm. cars or uh, I'm sure with your following, whatever it is that you decided to do, hopefully they would stick with you because mm. It's popped in my mind several times that YouTube could always just take this away from us. And for me, I, I have a, a full-time job and I could probably find something else to fill my YouTube channel that wouldn't be as exciting. I, I did waterfalls for a while and it wasn't right. as much fun. <laughs> but I think yeah. that you could find something, hopefully, but it, it is uh, something that I've actually thought about for you is because you're doing so well. What happens yeah. if it gets taken away? And, uh, you know, what will you do? But that's another discussion for another time. And it's good to hear that you're thinking about it. That's very smart thinking. Okay, so since we've had uh, a tough question, I'm going to ask you a, another tough question, a, a personal question that I didn't want to give you a heads up on because I want you to have uh, some a sincere answer. Um, in 2008, you experienced the unfortunate loss of a very close friend. Um, I have had that same experience. I lost a very good friend three, four years ago, and it changed everything about my outlook on life. Um, yeah. How did that loss of your friend uh, affect your outlook on life? And how has it changed the way that you see things at such a young age? Uh, yeah, so I was I was 18. Um, it was th three weeks before I turned 19. And it was it was really just unexpected. Like I seen him the day before he was fine. And, and then the next day, I just I was I remember I was at or was I? I think I was at Tim Hortons at, in the lineup and my mom called me like crying. She's like, I need to come pick you up right now. I'm like, what's going on? She's like, we'll talk when we get there. And, and she picked me up and she's like, your friend has passed away. And then and from that point on, I've just, I've really viewed um, life a whole lot differently. Like I, I take every day and understand that like, you don't know when something unexpected could happen. And like, this could be your last day. So live it to as if it was your last. And I, I just, I, I have a whole other, just other outlook on life now since then. 
and that's a great tribute to someone who's who's passed. And like I said, the same thing happened with me. A uh, friend of mine had a heart attack at 30, 30 in, in his 30s, basically, in his sleep. And wow. uh, I was out exploring when I got the news. And it changes everything. The way you mm-hmm. look at life to have something like that, you know, petty drama and stuff that goes on behind the scenes. It doesn't yes. matter when wow. you've experienced something like this. And, you know, mm-hmm. it's very clear to me that many mm-hmm. people in this hobby have not experienced a substantial loss that's that life altering. Absolutely. Right? I agree. Yeah. Yep. So so let's lighten things up a little bit. We've we've gone through <laughs> a couple of tougher questions. Who are some of your favorite explorers um that you uh, that maybe inspire you or get you excited to keep up in the hobby? Well, definitely, you know, I, I'd say when I was small and and just getting into this and wasn't anything really, I one of the first guys I seen was was you was your name that I seen back <laughs> in around I think 2013 or 14 was I seen your name and checked out your work and I'm like wow that's really that's really good and then obviously when I met Carlo and Terry and and Noah and um you know D Dog they they really got me into it and and inspire me to 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 really just you know keep going and yeah those are probably some of the main guys very cool yeah. um so you've been to so I mean you've got something like what did I what did I see so you've you've uploaded 274 videos and I'm sure you've got way more that you haven't uploaded yeah. of the many locations that you've been to what are maybe your top 2 standout locations that really were very memorable that were some of your favorite I'd say um, the first one that comes to mind whenever I get asked this question was the Marble Mansion. That was, and it still is to this day, my like ultimate dream home. That the whole 80s aesthetic with like the glass block windows and like the black tile. That is just like I actually a story about that place. So right before they started renovating it, and it was vacant again for a bit, right before it got vandalized, there was a time period like probably a month and a half where I would buy a lottery ticket every week in hopes to win it. So I could go buy it. It was, it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe one day. Right. <laughs> right. I, and then I guess a second one, um, there's been a lot that, the the one on the bridal path, 68, the bridal path was probably the biggest house I've ever explored. That was absolutely mind blowing that that could just sit there and not only be abandoned, but demolished, but that was insane. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one, especially with that bunker. That oh, was that so was cool. Awesome. I didn't notice that until like the second time I was in there. Yeah, well, it wouldn't be as hard to find, right? Because it was like hidden yeah. behind a, a door that was the same color as the wall. It right, basically yeah. merged right in. So, um, yeah. so I, I have to, I have to acknowledge something that a lot of people ask me or accuse me of, and you probably hear it too. And mm-hmm. it's the whole "what is up, guys" in the mirror thing. <laughs> <laughs> and and I mean, what I'll say is. When I started YouTube, I started mm-hmm. YouTube because of our friend Carlo. He's the one that got me into it. And yep. at the time, I would always make fun of Carlo. What yeah. is up, guys, at the beginning of every one of his videos? <laughs> and yeah. I started doing it as a joke, making fun of Carlo. And <laughs> and and I know you started at the same time. And Rhythm yeah. Writer also started kind of YouTubing at the same time. And we all yeah. started saying, what is up, guys, the same way at the same time. And then yeah. somehow we all ended up going in front of a mirror and saying it in front of every mirror we see. And it's kind of become our thing. It's your thing. It's my thing. And people yeah. always say, well, who started it? And I will uh-huh. just say, we started it. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know if it was you first and I copied you. Maybe Rhythm yeah. did it. And, and I, I have no idea. All I know is Boy. that we all did it at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so talk about you know, exploring. Um, hmm. now that you have a car, do yeah. you have, uh, they give a preference to explore, to explore alone or nice. with a small group or with like one other person? I think it depends honestly on the location. Like there are some that I'm comfortable just to go in and, and by myself and I'm fine. There are some where I like to have at least one person with me, just maybe to keep watch while I'm filming. That's, that makes me more at ease and more comfortable. And cause if I'm like nervous or anxious while I'm filming a video, the video will be horrible. It'll be rushed. It'll be shaky, you know? Um, but I think if I have a preference, I, I prefer to be with at least one person. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever yeah. been hurt or uh, had a close call? I mean, the places you go aren't typically very dangerous, but have you ever had a close call or hurt yourself exploring? 
There was one time we went into a place and there were uh, squatters living in it. And we were chased out by them. We had to go through a tiny broken window to get out. And they were chasing us. One of them had a um, a hunting knife. And the other one had a piece of like a staircase railing that was sharpened to be all sharp at the end. And then they're like wow. yelling at us and like, oh, this is our house. Get out of here and all this. So, And they were close behind us. It would have been bad. Wow. Didn't yeah. you, wasn't it you that went to a house after J Station had booby trapped the house? Yeah, the so the Brady Bunch house we were calling it, and I yeah. was I was walking up the stairs to go to that room where the pool table was. Yeah, and yeah. a knife fell from the ceiling, and it was like inches beside my head. Yeah, that's crazy! What an idiot! <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so close. Such yeah. an idiot. Wow. Yeah. Um. Wow, that's I mean that's a whole different type of injury, right? Not like falling through yeah. a floor. That's like. Squatters right. is one thing, but some idiot's prank that he didn't take down. What a dumbass. Oh, I know. <laughs> so, okay, so what about the law? Have you ever had any serious run-ins with police or uh, have you ever been uh, charged? So there's been there's been a couple instances where, yeah, I've got trespassing tickets. Just the, the $65, you know, just the basic ticket. But there was one run-in back um, like a week, not even a week before Christmas, just this past December. I was out with a couple guys and which I'll leave them unnamed. I don't know if they want to be, you know, but um, we were out and we were in this house and one of them yelled down to me, Ethan, there's someone coming up to the front door. And I just thought like, maybe he just, I'm like, there's no way. Maybe he's just, they're walking past the house or something. You know, I didn't really fully believe it at the time, but I walked down the stairs, ran down the stairs and looked through the window beside the front door. And sure enough, there was a guy walking up to the front door. So I'm like, you know, let's run down to the basement because it had a walkout basement and we'll run out the back. So we did that. We came around the corner back to the top of the street that the house was on. And the developer was sitting in his truck and he he called us over and he's like, what the F are you doing in my houses and all this? And then uh, 30 minutes later, we had, I don't know, nine or 10 police cars on us with canine and they were questioning us for breaking in and all this stuff, but nothing came out of it, thankfully, but it was close. Like I thought I was going to the station for the day. I, <laughs> you know? So I talked to Rhythm Rider just yesterday. He's episode two. And we were yeah. talking about the human trafficking house. Do you, do you know mm-hmm. the one I'm talking about? Okay. So you got caught there. That was terrifying. So that tell was, us about that because we were talking. See, I asked Rhythm Rider. I said, you know, the human trafficking house. We don't want to get into it, but I said the, the number one question I have was, did we mm-hmm. cross a line going into that house? And mm-hmm. we kind of think we did. Um, I mean, there was yeah. no doubt that nobody lived in it, and it wasn't. It was yeah. vacant. Mm-hmm. But anytime I've been by since, there's been mm-hmm. somebody in the driveway working on a car or something. But you mm-hmm. went not too long after us, and you had a pretty serious run in. Yeah, I was upstairs with a friend of mine that I went to school with and um, just checking it out. And someone opened the front door and it was like in like a really thick, like Russian accent. They're like, who the F is in my house? Like yelling. And I'm just like, I think my soul left my body. Like I was like, we're done. <laughs> I was so scared. And um, and then we came down because obviously we're not getting out. So we went, came down and I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm not here for any other reason other than it's take pictures. It's abandoned. And then I was going to leave. And he just he started saying a bunch of stuff in, in like Russian that I didn't understand. And then he's like, wait here until the police get here. And they had us handcuffed. And oh. and he's like, because it was close to a holiday. So he's like, he's like, today's your lucky day. He's decided he's not going to press charges. Just if, but if you're caught here again, you're going to jail. So it was the luckiest thing, but that was, oh man, that was scary. So how did he know you were there? So he told me that, um, that entrance we had went in had a silent alarm that was hooked up to his phone. Oh, okay. And that there's camera, there was cameras hidden in the right. tree along the, I guess it would be the South side of the house has okay. cameras. So that must be after we were there because Rhythm and I and Zenny was Zay. We were there for like three hours when we went in the middle of the day. (laughs) So (laughs) crazy. So a question I'm asking everybody, but I think I already know the answer. The the question is what's in your camera bag, but I think Mm -hmm. it's just your phone. (laughs) 
It's literally, I have a, I have an iPhone 14 Pro Max, and then I have yeah. my light, my handheld light for dark boarded up places. That's really it. That's the way to do it. I mean, I carry so much shit with me. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh, man. So just a couple other things. We're almost done here. I When I think about guys who remind me of you, I think of uh, big banks out of the United States. You're almost yeah. like Canada's version of big banks. Do you have any uh, any plans to travel and maybe meet up with someone like him? Well, first of all, that means a lot. So thank you. Um, <laughs> he, uh, actually, we're, I'm in talks with him right now that he um, we might be getting together in the near future to explore together. But I, I definitely want to, at some point, travel maybe towards the States because I know there's some incredible mansions down there that he's done. Yeah. I would love to do just... A fraction of the ones he's done would be awesome. Yeah, he's. Uh, you guys are a lot alike, and uh, I think your followers and his and his followers would both really come together and and like to see you guys do a collaboration. I'd like to see you guys do a collaboration. He's a great right. guy. Um, sure. so if there was a young explorer out there looking to get into the hobby, uh, and start their own YouTube channel or just start exploring in general, what advice mm -hmm. do you have for somebody like that? That you know. When you first start off and the views and, you know, it, it's just, it's not, it might not be where you want it to be. You, you're not going to blow up overnight and that can be discouraging. But I guess so what I would say to that is just keep going. Like you're going to have a first like really hard time, but if you keep going and just put the hard work in and the effort and, and you have a passion for it, you, you will achieve what your goal is without a doubt. And I think that's a thing with a lot of people is that, they don't have the results they want right off the bat and they get discouraged and maybe they give up or don't put as much effort into it. But I think if you just keep pushing and keep going, you can really do anything. Very good answer. And it's a, a very good positive outlook for, for somebody who's just going to get started. Uh, that's all the questions that I have for you, but I, I thought I'd open the floor to you. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about anything that I didn't bring up or anything that you'd like to discuss? Um, I guess I could mention it. Well, you know, I have the chance. So um, I'm going to try and keep it light. But um, just lately, over the past, I guess, course of the year, there was um, obviously someone who I don't even want to know if I drop their name, but someone who um, I used to be very good close friends with for years somehow <laughs> um that has just in my eyes really just put a bad what's the word bad just look on the hobby i feel like and and and, and just the fact that he's tried to put a bad name on people like myself and other close friends of mine and yours um I'm trying to be very selective with what I say in words. I don't want to, you know, but I, I just, I, I just, I just wish that we could get together and, and, or, or along better rather. I wish there wasn't so much conflict and so much drama and so much just unnecessary BS. You know what I mean? And that's just something that, uh, I just, I think about a lot, you know, I don't see the reason for it, but I know, uh, other people have their reasons for maybe not getting along with others, but, I just, that's the way that I view that. Yeah, I, I feel like um, some people change and some people yeah. don't change. Um, and yeah, there are certain people that whether they have a life experience or they've grown a little bit older, they've matured, they move on past certain things. Then there's mm -hmm. other people who just hold a grudge and don't let go. And this type of stuff follows them everywhere they go. And I'm not talking about one specific person. I'm talking about many people who I know in this yeah. hobby that they can't seem to let go of certain things and just do your thing and, mm -hmm. and, and let it be. And it drives me nuts to see somebody drag you through the mud like this, because I mean, we're not all perfect, you know? No. And the, the biggest thing that makes me laugh is th this person or these people who have, have, you know, tried to drag your name through the mud. This has been going on since you were like, 18 years old, this type of stuff. And yeah. my, my, my comment to this has always been, you can't expect an 18 year old or a 20 year old or a 23 year old to act and think like a 40 year old, like a 50 right. year old, 
Yeah. When I was your age, I was doing stupid shit <laughs> yeah. that yeah. I wouldn't do now. And exactly. when you're for when you're in your 40s, you're not going to be doing certain things that you're doing now. You have to make those mistakes, yeah. learn from them, and you just can't expect somebody in their late teens and early 20s to act and think and and perform like someone in their 40s and 50s. Exactly. You just and, and for somebody at at my age to be criticizing someone of your age for doing the things that you do. It's, it's ridiculous. And yeah. I don't know who it is you're talking about. Uh, yeah. so, uh, maybe it's somebody I know, maybe it's not, but anyways, there is, yeah, there, it, it sucks that there's somebody who's got such a, uh, a thing against you that they, mm. that they just can't let it go. My, 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 my thoughts here to this person, just drop it, just mm. drop it. And everybody else's lives will be better, including his or hers. Absolutely. Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, so that's the that's it. We've had Ethan Mini here, guys. All of his links are going to be down below. His YouTube channel, his Instagram will be down below. He's also on TikTok. His links are going to be down below. Make sure you follow. Make sure you subscribe. Ethan, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for joining us for episode four of All Access, the Free Photography Podcast. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you for having me. All right, guys, that was Ethan Minnie, and uh, glad to have him on the podcast. Guy started out at a very, very young age, and we made some very good points between he and I on some key issues that have been brought up over the years with certain people. I think the most important thing I could have said in that interview was in response to him being uh, harassed by some people online about what he is, what he does and the way he explores and some of the things that he does. Again, I'll say it again, you cannot judge someone. When you're in your 40s or your 50s, you cannot judge someone for how they act in their late teens and early 20s because you were 100% doing stupid things in your late teens and early 20s that you would not be doing now. Let people live, let them be, and that's all I have to say. But now we're going to move on to the portion of the podcast where I always read a few lines or uh, paragraphs from the book Access All Areas. Access All Areas was put out in 2005 by a guy by the name of Ninjalicious. His real name was Jeff Chapman. Unfortunately, Jeff passed away in 2005, shortly after or around the time that the book was published. Now, Jeff has not been around to see the progression of the hobby, but I will say, like I say in every episode, guys, writings of Jeff Chapman from 2005 are 100% relevant in the urban exploration world today in 2023. So because Ethan uh, almost exclusively explores mansions, not always abandoned, hardly ever actually abandoned. I wanted to go back into access all areas and see what Jeff has to say about exploring not abandoned sites. So I'm going to go to page 107 of access all areas to the page titled active sites. So here we go. Many explorers I've spoken with complain about the lack of UE sites in their area and generally seem to agonize over the difficulty of finding targets. I can only conclude that these people either one, live in the wrong parts of the world, such as the Congo or none of it, two, aren't paying enough attention to, to their surroundings, or three, need to expand their definition of suitable targets. In Toronto, where I've been living and actively exploring for the past decade, I have the sense that I've seen maybe 5% of what the city has to offer. And I always have more potential targets to explore than I have time. I don't think this is just because Toronto is a great city to explore. When in other big cities, I see a constant, seemingly inexhaustible stream of opportunities for exploration. And they keep building and digging more. So if you live in or near an actual city and bemoan the lack of places to explore, by which you are almost certainly meaning abandoned buildings and storm drains, you're defining the hobby too narrowly and limiting your horizons and missing out as a result, open your eyes and see beyond the abandoned buildings. That's it, guys. Jeff Chapman himself says, open your eyes, see beyond abandoned buildings. Rooftopping. Do these people who criticize explorers who like to explore vacant, not abandoned mansions, do they criticize people for going onto rooftops because a rooftop is not abandoned? Do these people who like to criticize explorers who go into vacant mansions and MLS sites, do they criticize people who go into active storm drains or sewers or tunnels? They're not abandoned either. Guys, stop criticizing people for not exploring the things that you like to explore. It's a hobby to each his own, to each her own. 
Ethan Minnie, myself, many of my friends, we love to explore these massive vacant mansions that nobody's currently living in and nobody's using. And it is extremely interesting to uh, walk around through these places and see how these people live. So that's it, guys. That's my uh, rant for today and my uh, excerpt from the book, Access All Areas. I highly recommend you read this book. There's a link in the blog description down below to go to Amazon and get yourself a copy of Access All Areas, which I highly recommend. Okay, guys, that's a wrap on this podcast. We've had a few really good episodes. So we've had Carlo Pelota, episode one, Rhythm Rider, episode two, and we've had Greg Abandon for episode three, and now we just wrapped up Ethan Mini for episode four. Still to come, we have Brent from Abandoned Urbex Canada. We've got uh, Angelo from Exploring with Angelo. We've got a very special episode we're gonna do with a girl by the name of Trespass Everywhere, and she has this little book that she cut, that she put out with stories from paperwork and documents that she found in abandoned buildings. And we're gonna talk to her about this little project of hers that she did. We're gonna talk to my very good friend, Germ9, and we've just solidified a day with a lawyer to talk to a criminal lawyer about the uh, legal implications of urban exploration and things that you might wanna know. So that's it, guys. This has been episode four of All Access, the photography podcast about urban exploration. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sticking around for the whole interview, the whole podcast, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.